yo, yeah, guys, we are back, guys. Shout out to the subs, man, and shout out to everybody watching these random ass videos that I'm making. <laughs> uh, if you just clicked on this one, just hey, shout out to you still. Um, if you don't know what this is, we're just watching random Halloween related stuff every day, all month long. Um, so, but but this week, guys. You guys know it's Elvira week, so uh, welcome back, guys, to Elvira week. <laughs> I'm so excited to be doing it, guys. Um, yeah, guys, so here we go. Uh, we got a little different, but this is, I think this is like, I want to say this is Cassandra. That's, you know, Elvira, Cassandra Peterson. I think it's her, like, showing. <laughs> Auctioning, I guess. I don't know. Okay, this is my slot machine topper. This is such a cool item. There was a weird story about one of these uh, washing up on shore. <laughs> so someone found one on the beach, but that is not this one. But they're very rare kind of, and hard to find. Um, this is my beautiful dress I had made by uh, Jane Book. This was originally a dress that I wore around. I wore it to a party one time, just this part. And um, I later used it in Haunted Hills. We had this, this really gorgeous, long, flowing robe. When I'm playing the character Elura, which coincidentally was the name of my wig fiber <laughs> that I wore. Um, but anyway, we had this made to do a dream sequence where Elura was running down the stairway and through the castle. And so we wanted something flowy that caught the uh, the air, you know, when she ran. Um, some of my scripts here, when I wrote the uh, different television show, this one was the Elvira show for uh, uh, CBS. Guys, we just watched that and yesterday. I wrote it was along amazing. with my partner, John Paragon. We love it. We had such a blast doing it. And the show turned out fantastic. Unfortunately, didn't get picked up. You can read all about the, those uh, sour grapes <laughs> in my autobiography. Anyway, and this was a cover that, that I, I think was a gift to me to put my script in for the movie Mistress of the Dark. So it's what I kept my, my script that I, that I uh, read off of every day to remember my lines. I uh, kept that in there. Um, these are various little candles and things I've collected over the years. I had what I call my macabre collection uh, that I displayed in my various houses. Uh, these are some of those items, like a bronze uh, Bacchus, I imagine this is. But anything that looked like a devil or a spider or a snake or a skeleton is what I collected. Um, these are a couple of awesome props from my TV show, my first movie macabre in yeah, the 80s. Yeah, guys, we just um, saw that This fuck was is. when John Carradine came to be on my show, which was pretty freaking thrilling, and we had him read this little story to kids. It's a very awful story about it. A little pumpkin that's finally adopted by a little girl who then plunges a knife deep into his brain. <laughs> and that's the end of that story. But John Carradine um, read the book, and that was art by my friend Robert Redding. Um, he did the cover. Inside, I wrote the story down, so it's in there in uh, Sharpie. That's fire. This album is a prop album cover. It's got some horrible old record in it. I don't even know what, but it was just put together real quickly by Robert Redding, my um, best friend and prop master. He did everything. <laughs> Robert did everything because he could. Um, so he made that, but it's for a little segment on Movie Macabre, my first Movie Macabre, in the first two or three years of the show that I uh, am selling my fake Christmas Carol album of my favorite uh, carols which John Paragon came up with and he and I went and recorded them later uh, um, but they're like Hark the Hell's Angels Sing and Silent Night, Bloody Night, stuff like that. This is a little costume that we had made for Elvira's Haunted Hills. Um, the top part, the bodice, is actually one of my dresses, my Elvira dresses that I wore. We removed the skirt and we added this little frilly chiffon skirt because it's for the number in Elvira's Haunted Hills. Um, yes, I can, can. Uh, it's it's a, a musical number that I was able to do in Haunted Hills. Sam Irvin, the director, came up with this idea at the last minute on the panties 
putting the word applause. So we had this dance number, and at one point, at the end, I was supposed to turn around like a can-can girl and then throw my you know, skirt up over my butt. And Sam uh, Irvin came up with this idea to put applause on my ass, and people just loved it, I guess. <laughs> So these are the one and only infamous applause panties. They were made at the last moment in Romania by a poor seamstress who was very stressed about doing that, uh, but she did an awesome job. And, and here they are, the one and onlys. This is kind of an interesting thing. It's a lobby standee oh, for fire. movie theaters all over the country. And the interesting thing about this that you won't find anywhere else is that we have a brownie here lighting the fire um she's roasting marshmallows over it and what happened is that we were told by the girl scouts of america that we couldn't use a brownie in the picture and all of the uh ads and standees and cards and everything from then on uh eating mcclurg who played chastity pariah replaced the brownie um, for legal reasons so this is kind of a rare piece. I don't know if uh, there are much, uh, many of them out there. I've never seen another one. This case contains a lot of really interesting items, um, including report cards from when I was a tiny child in Kansas, um, my high school diploma, which is pretty crazy. Yes, I did graduate high school. Uh, I know, yeah. hard to believe. Um, my letter from Elvis Presley that he wrote to me the night I met him uh, with all his little notes that are very um, kind of spirituality Guys. based. So this letter is, is a big deal and it's, it's um, written on just what he found laying there on his coffee table, which is a letter to his father, Vernon Presley. Um, so that, that was a very, very big deal for me. Um, the scarf and the glasses are actually from my Not Scary Farm show, my last one. Um, they're made to be like the scarf and glasses that I wore um, in Mistress of the Dark. But these were used in the 2017 um, Not Scary Farm show where I drove my macabre out on stage and took them off. Um, and down here, this is pretty awesome because this is the original steering wheel that we had on the macabre made by the prop department of NBC Universal. Um, when I bought the car, I wanted to keep the steering wheel, but you are not legally allowed to have a steering wheel that small and made out of chain. So had to take that off and it got lost for years and we were able to recover it. So I'm really glad I found this piece again. This is an Elvira Santa suit along with the boots and the belt um, that I have worn more times than I could possibly tell you for everything. I did greeting cards in it. I did TV shows in it. I did parades in it. Uh, and it's never been washed. That's the scary thing. We <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> because you couldn't clean it because of this marabou, which, I mean, it's kind of sad. It kind of looks like it's molting now. But this thing has seen a lot of action, I got to tell you. Um, most recently in my um, new movie macabre show that I did in 2013, I think. This is my little metal outfit that not only did I wear as a costume in the early days, early 80s at Not Scary Farm, but um, I, and it was designed by my friend Robert Redding. Um, so I danced in this every night at Knott's. Um, then I used this top part uh, to be in the movie Pee Wee's Big Adventure as the biker mama. So came in handy. Um, over here is a really fabulous dress designed and created for me, especially by um, Michael Schmidt, who is a fantastic designer, designs for a million and one different um, singers and celebrities. And he made this with, um, this. I mean, there were a million little worker bees putting on these Swarovski crystals. This thing weighs a ton. But he had to make me a costume that looked similar to um, my costume from Mistress of the Dark. We wanted to get the same vibe. And so I wore this in the last show I did at Not Scary Farm because I twirled tassels. So we had to make a tassel uh, twirling bra again um, and a costume that, that would work for the finale. So it was a big, big finale number of my finale show at Not Scary Farm. 
There's interesting things in this case. Um, one that I love that is one of my prized possessions is a picture from Queen, who I met and hung out with, and signed by Freddie Mercury and all of the band members to me, long before I was Elvira. Uh, another one is a, an original Robert Redding. My, my friend Robert Redding did a cartoon of Elvira. It was the first thing we did. We put it in my first little newsletter. We were so excited about it. Um, and then the license plate from the car and the dashboard ornament from uh, my original shit. macabre mobile um, made by NBC Universal for Mistress of the Dark. Um, this was the original license plate uh, border that was on the car. I had to take that off when I bought the car too because couldn't you weren't allowed to have it on the car for whatever reason. And also the little um, instead of uh, you know having Jesus on the dashboard, we had the Grim Reaper. So there is the original one and only Grim Reaper that was on the car in the movie. That's so fun. This is a really important item because this is one of three original dresses. I, I am, it very well may be the first original dress. Um, I see that the bra inside has faded terribly. It used to be black, it's faded to some kind of weird gray flesh color. Um, but I know this is the original, one of the originals because it was made out of very, very thin polyester when I first started. Um, as time went on, the fabric got thicker and thicker. So this is positively one of my very first dresses. Um, and this is the one and only original first belt. Still has a leather pin. Robert found this at a department store and it was my first belt I wore on Movie Macabre. Um, till later we began having them made and we used an actual dagger in them. But this is the one and only first belt uh, Elvira ever used, along with this dress. Sad to see her go. These are my very, very sad looking original Elvira heels that I bought at Fredericks of Hollywood. Um, <laughs> they're really, uh, really, uh, they got a lot of wear, let me tell you, because I thought I was going to be able to get more pairs as time went on, but Fredericks of Hollywood discontinued this shoe. And I loved it so much and, and wanted to keep the very same look that we ended up having more shoes like this made. Um, uh, you know, personally, just completely made by an Italian cobbler, I guess. And uh, so these are kind of sad, but they're very special to me. We have their little rubber pads that I had put on later so I didn't fall on my butt. And uh, I used them at Not Scary Farm when I was dancing, so made them safe. And um, these were $35 originally. Uh, later when I had copies made, they were up to $1,200 to $2,000 for the same pair. Remember going down Hollywood Boulevard, buying them, I was so happy. So these are just a few of the items here in my auction that takes place at Julian's on December 4th. Um, I have loved and treasured these items my whole life for many, many decades. And I, I hope that you will love them and treasure them as much as I do if you're lucky enough to win one of them. And take care of them for me, okay? That was fire, guys. <laughs> I'm fucking disappointed that, I didn't, that I'm just hearing about that now when that was two fucking years ago. I could have gone to the. I could have gone to it just to fucking check it out. Oh well. All right, guys. We'll be back, guys. Shout out to the subs. Shout out to anybody watching, guys. My real channel, my music is in the description. Check it out, and guys. We'll be back. <laughs>